Can you get outstanding results using YouTube ads? Yes. Can you get outstanding results using LinkedIn ads? Yes. Can you get outstanding results using Facebook ads? Yes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Business Growth Secrets. Uh, today, I'm really, really excited to have one of our, our great clients here, uh, Adil Remet, who is a coach and founder of the Remit Method that really helps people to um, cure trauma, issues, limited and belief through um, neuroscience, which is super exciting. Uh, she's been a client of ours. She's achieved some success lately, and I, I wanted to invite her on the podcast because of that. She's just won an award in thought leadership um, for the difference she's making with the work she's doing, which is, is incredible. Um, so I brought her on, and she's got some questions for me as well. So uh, we're going to go through those questions. I think there are a lot of those questions today are about marketing. So if you want to understand how to get rid of limited beliefs, power yourself up, and market your business to success, you are in the right place. Uh, welcome, Adil. Thank you for coming on and congratulations on your recent award. You happy? Thank you, Adam. Yes, very happy. And thank you so much because it's because of the branding course that I did that of yours that um, you know, I hadn't even thought of applying for a, a, an award before. I hadn't thought of I hadn't thought that was a possibility until I went through the through the program. And um, so my husband, Steve Remit, and I run the Remit Method. We, we founded it together and we work with um, mindset, work using neuroscience to change core limiting beliefs. So the award we won was um, the Stevie Thought Leadership in Customer Service Award. Brilliant. That's amazing. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. So that we've got I, that, I, yeah. I think that's that, you know, it's amazing to 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 hear that you implemented, you took action, uh, you went out, followed the process and won that award. And building a brand is often something that people don't take action on. And and really it's something that's, you know, very easy. You, how long have you been doing this for now? Uh, the business itself since 2017. Okay. Um, and this is your first award? This is our first award. Oh, this is the first award since yes. well, well done. Because I've never thought of it before. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and, and how's that affected you? How's it impacted you? Is that giving you more opportunity? Um, well, one of the big things um, was being able to share that on social media. Yes. So, you know, it's it's lovely to get the award, of course. Mm. But in addition to that, what I wasn't expecting and that I found so valuable was the comments from the judges. Yeah. So we got some wonderful comments. They, they share that with you. We've got Brilliant. some wonderful comments and I made them into a social media post with the quotes from the judges. Excellent. And I thought that was really, you know, we got so much um lovely positive feedback and support from followers and clients and that. Yes. Oh, so Brilliant. That well, well, look, you know, you're over here with me now in sunny Essex, all the way from Chicago. What's it like in Chicago at the moment? It is, the windy um, city, right? yeah, the yeah. windy city. Uh, it's warm. Uh, and it, mind you, it's it's pretty hot here at the moment as well. Yeah. So yeah, our summers are very hot there. Brilliant. So you're making a big impact over over in Chicago. I know that you've got some questions for me, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening, watching, however they're taking the information in as well, will, will be really interested in to understand limiting beliefs, how to overcome them. You know, something that I believe is so important, you know, like even like what you just said a moment ago, coming out, winning that award in thought leadership, you know, maybe the reason you hadn't entered an award before perhaps is you weren't sure whether you would get it or whether you would win it. And that often stops people from taking action. So is there a certain process you use to help people overcome their limiting beliefs? Tell me a little bit about what yes, you do. Yes, absolutely. Of course. Uh, so one of the things, everything we do is based in, in neuroscience and there's two main pieces to it. The first piece, and I think this is so important for people to know, negative emotions, the stress chemicals that are produced when we have any negative emotion, one of the main things it does is it takes the prefrontal cortex of the brain where we do our cognitive thinking offline. So whenever we're feeling any negative emotion, we literally can't think straight. So that's one <laughs> where of the, the phrase things, comes from, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And it's one of the things that stops people from taking action and doing, you know, like you, for example, teach so much wonderful um, techniques and things and like how to get an award on all the branding and that. But for the, you, for the most part, a person has to actually do it. Of course. And one of the things that stops people is no blood in the prefrontal cortex. So they're, they're uh, overwhelmed or, um, you know, procrastination, all of that. And the second piece is uh, the unconscious self-image and worldview. 
So those are our core beliefs that where, you know, where one person will take the action and another person won't. And it's based in that unconscious self-image. How they see themselves. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. And it's all on automatic. So we change that, those references in the unconscious part of the brain, and then the action is automatic. Have you got a couple of quick tips for people that are listening right now? Just a couple of little tweaks. Obviously, without going too deep, you know, they can certainly go and get in touch with you and we'll give you details at the end of the episode. But is there one or two tweaks that you would give somebody to uh, to bring more blood into the, uh, you know, the what, what is it that you would suggest people do to try and, and also change their self-image, which is super important? Absolutely. So the first very quick tip is that when you're feeling good, the feel-good chemicals like uh, endorphins, serotonin, oxytocin, those allow blood back to the prefrontal cortex. So the bottom line is to do whatever it takes to feel good before you want to take action or make decisions or use your cognitive thinking at all. So for example, listening to music you love, mm. thinking about something you enjoy, doing some physical exercise, anything that feels, watching comedy, anything that feels good. When you're feeling good, you know you've got that part of your brain back online and then make the decisions, take the actions and so on. And to have that awareness for people can is, is the first step of any change is that that awareness. And if people start to realize actually that's something that, you know, is one of the reasons that they're feeling overwhelmed, procrastinating, suffering from that perfectionism is because they've got to, to reshape themselves and get themselves in the right state essentially, isn't it, to, to make those changes. So so brilliant stuff. And I've got no, no, I'm not surprised that you've just won this award in thought leadership. The work you're doing is absolutely amazing. Um, I know you had some questions that you wanted to ask me as well. So it'd be great to hear what you might want to ask today and, and see if I can, you know, help you even more, being that you're obviously a big action taker that manages their serotonin, endorphins and oxytocin. Awesome. <laughs> Good stuff. So, so, so what we've got there, what questions did you so, ask? So, yeah, the, the first thing I want to ask you is we have been focusing on, um, my big focus was Facebook originally. So yeah. I was, I'm very active on Facebook and that's kind of where, we, then we moved to paid YouTube advertising. Okay. Um, and now I'm shifting to LinkedIn. And my no, question for right. you is, yeah. um, would you, do you recommend focusing, picking one lane and sticking with that? Or would you say to diversify a bit to kind of reach different audiences? Yeah, I love the question. I think it's a really, really good question. Something that a lot of other people that are, are tuning in, you know, often we we do get this this kind of mentality is that the grass might be greener on one of the other sides and we can jump between the different platforms to see what can be created. And, and the truth is, can you get outstanding results using YouTube ads? Yes. Can you get outstanding results using LinkedIn ads? Yes. Can you get outstanding results using Facebook ads? Yes. The reason that most people don't get outstanding results is because they jump between them before finishing the job on the one that they're on. Uh, so, for example, and, and the best way to look at it is um, you've obviously got a great business, great coaching business. You only can take on so many clients whether you, even if you do group coaching, one-to-one -one coaching, whatever structure you're in, you can only take on so many. You don't have infinite scale. So let's say you wanted another 50 clients a month, uh, and I don't know how many you want, but let's just imagine you wanted 50 clients a month. If you want 50 clients a month, we have to recognize that there's, on Facebook, 2 billion people. Mm -hmm. So you can never hit scale for your, your 50 clients a month. So you could easily find 50 clients a month through Facebook. You could easily find 100, you could easily find 200, you could easily find 500. To, if you wanted to go global, you could find 1,000 clients a month. So often when we're jumping, we're jumping too early and we're jumping to go to a different structure. Um, so what I would sort of suggest is that, you know, to, to massive scale on Facebook, massive scale on YouTube, and, you know, pretty big scale on LinkedIn as well. So... What I'll do is we'll go a bit further than that. What's LinkedIn good for? LinkedIn ads are good because we can really, really go after the job title. So we're going to pay more to get someone LinkedIn. We're going to pay more money to get our message to the right person on LinkedIn. But we are going to be able to speak to people with the job title that we want. So we've got this uber, really powerful targeting, right? Um, YouTube, if we look at what's good about YouTube, YouTube is, is searchable. So what we can do is you can pay to get in front of people that are searching for the thing that we want, which is also really powerful. Now, where's Facebook really powerful? Facebook's really powerful. Is in It's so big 
that there is so much scale and so much opportunity to, to get to the people we want. And then we fundamentally need to understand how ads work. So to give you a very quick synopsis on, on, on a really easy way for you to look at it and people that are watching to look at it, is how it works is when you buy ads and you buy media, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, you're buying a sack of eyeballs, right? And that's how you buy them. You buy them 1,000 at a time. So we say we've got a sack of 1,000 eyeballs here on LinkedIn. We've got a sack of 1,000 eyeballs here on YouTube. And we've got a sack of 1,000 eyeballs here on Facebook. So we've got 3,000 eyeballs on the table. Now, what these represent is, is CPM. That's cost per millennia. So it's cost per thousand. So we're buying them in 1,000. You go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn, it's going to cost you £50 for that 1,000 eyes. You go to YouTube, it's probably going to cost you 30, 35,000, 35 pounds for that 1,000 eyes. You go to Facebook, it's cost you 15, 20. So it's so essentially what you're looking at is do you want to pay more money for a higher quality or a real message to market match? Or do you want to go volume based and get out to loads of people? Now, the reason that we use Facebook ads more, we use all three, by the way, but the reason we use Facebook ads most is because we, as a volume-based business, we want to get out to more people. And therefore, I know that if I want to speak to 100,000 people, then I just need to buy, you know, a 1,000 sack of 1,000 eyes, right, in order to get out there, you know, et cetera. So that, that's the way that we, we would do it. So um, I think that what you have to look at then is, so this will go even further, so we can go all day on this question. But if, if you want to go even further, then you say, how good are you at getting your message to those 1,000 eyes and making sure it's a fit? Because if the message and the market match are not there, then you won't get the response you want from the client you want. So I think that what where people struggle is they might start on Facebook and they start running a few ads, don't necessarily, they get okay results and and they don't take it to the bank. They don't finish the job. Then they jump over to YouTube and then they don't take it to the bank, finish the job. And then they jump over to LinkedIn and don't take it to the bank, finish the job. Where well, they're better off staying in the one place, finishing the job, making your advertising amazing, and then you get loads of results. Right. So it's a long, long answer, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good question. So, so my suggestion for people that are watching would be, you only really need to get good at one traffic source if you're running ads and then as your business scale. So what will one traffic source of paid ads get you? Million pound a year from one traffic source being good at it. Right. That's what will get you. You want to get to 10 million pound a year? You're going to need probably three traffic sources to get to 10 million. But for one million pounds or one million dollars, right? <laughs> you know, you're going to be looking at um, one traffic source, and Facebook ads to get you to a million dollars. Facebook ads to get you to a million pounds, easy. Yeah, we we tried Facebook ads in the past and found it so difficult mm. to to kind of reach the right type of person. So let's talk about that for a minute. So what you yeah. want to look at? Who is the ideal target market for us uh, now? Is coaches? Yeah. So so we can target coaches pretty easy on LinkedIn because we can go after the job title, and we can target them pretty easy on YouTube. The way that you make coaches work on Facebook is in the ads, you have to call the audience immediately. So the first thing you would say in the ad is, attention coaches, right. immediately. Now, why would you do that? Well, because you only pay for your sack of eyeballs if somebody is actually given their eyeball to the, to the ad. Now, if they, if they flick off that ad in three seconds, you ain't paying for the eyeball, which is lovely. So it means that by you getting the attention to the market immediately, that means you're going to pay less because only the right people are going to stay. That's very good. A very good point. And are you talking about video ad on Facebook? That, that's in reference to a video ad, but yeah. it's also in reference to a just a standard ad because you just put in there attention coaches. You put it in the um, you put it in the copywriting. You put it in the headline at the bottom, and you put in the image. So then they've got no confusion as to whether this is for them or not for them. Yeah, that's a really good point. And, and we haven't tried that yet. Yeah. So we'll give that a code. Yeah, definitely. for sure. That'll, make a, that'll definitely make a difference. Yeah. Fabulous. I also wanted to say one more thing is that um, your the interview that you did with John Travolta mm. on YouTube mm. was a fantastic um, op, uh, a fa fantastic um, opportunity. for. Uh, we've shared that 
that thing because it relates to what we do because he was talking about when he was 16 years old mm. he did his an audition in New York and was told to get out of the business yeah. and he said it didn't even occur to him to take that seriously he, it, he didn't have a reference for the fact he just thought this guy doesn't know what he's talking about yeah lovely, lovely. and that's precisely that's identity, that self-image right? yeah that identity and and I think the frame of reference helps people win um, a lot of the time. And I think that's what you're trying to help people to see, which is great, great, great work, which that's is really awesome. Absolutely. So, Adam, one of the questions we get asked quite a lot, and we want to get your perspective on it, is what do you find holds people back from taking action the most? Oh, what, what a wonderful question, right? Um, and because there's so many, so many reasons, so many reasons that people don't take action. And, and a lot of the time it is that confidence mm -hmm. and, and people dress it up in different ways. Um, people will dress it up in, I don't have time. And a lot of the time it, that actually is that they don't have the confidence. Uh, people will say, I don't really know if I need this. And a lot of the time they don't have the confidence. And I think that confidence is linked into what you do and what you teach, which is that self-identity. You know, I often say to people, especially the industry, you're, you're a coach, although you work in different areas to what I work in, you know, we're still helping people to achieve better results in one way or another. I do that in business. You do that in their in their lifestyle, in their, you know, in terms of their mindset, in terms of the results they create. And, and a lot of the time what happens is, is, is people really want to achieve something. They, they really want to go out and make something happen. But there is an internal conflict that's stopping them from taking that next step to get that to where they want to go. And I think for me... Um, one of the things that you talked about with identity is super important because if people don't believe they can win, if they don't believe they are going to succeed, if they don't believe that they can take money, uh, that they can make money and they can get to where they want to be in terms of making money, they just don't take any action because they'd rather not take action and not fail than take action and fail and then be in a place where they're like, oh, well, you know, and, and I missed out and they didn't feel so good. And I think that a lot of people that do take action have, have done so through mini wins of confidence, you know, and it's, it's, if I give you a frame for, for this, that I remember, you know, when I first started out in my career, when I had low confidence and I had low self-esteem, you know, when I was a young man trying to go out there and make things happen in my life and not really sure how to put the pieces of the puzzle together, I got a job at a, uh, a, a, a retail place that sold TVs, washing machines and all this kind of stuff called Powerhouse. And I remember walking in there and, and my mindset was like, oh, I just want to hide, you know, I just want to get through the day. I don't want to do too much. And then when I had my first interaction with a customer and succeeded, that built a small building block of confidence. And then I realized that actually I could build good relationships. I built another building block and another building block. So I'm a big believer in, in positive momentum and also negative momentum as well. And I think a lot of people can fall into a negative momentum where, you know, they were at a place in their lives where things are going right. And then a few things knocked her back and all of a sudden that it took the table out. It's all about the table legs took the table out from it and it crashed. So, so for me, I think people don't take action because they lack belief, they lack confidence, and they perhaps don't have the situational awareness to understand that they should take the action in order to get a different result. Right, yeah. And and do you find also deserving if you feel that a lot of people feel they don't deserve success or they're scared of success as well? Yeah, I, th I think that what you talked about identity, mm -hmm. I think is really, really important. That's the core of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I really yeah. do. Because yeah. there, I meet people all the time and they're like, I am a winner. Yeah. And you know what? The truth is they can be absolutely clueless, know nothing about business, know nothing about sales, nothing about marketing, nothing about branding, nothing about strategy. But because they believe they're a winner... They will go on the journey and they will have some ups and downs, but they'll eventually get there because they have the belief. They have it up here. You've got to be successful in your mind before you'll ever be successful in real life, right? And I think that that's the first step that people can make. And that's why I'm a big believer in what you do and what you talk about because this is very, very powerful in it and it really does help people to build that. Um, something for me is, for me, it was building blocks, 
little mini wins that built my confidence that got me to a point where I was like, you know what? I do deserve this. Good for you. Yeah, yes. because I got there. That's but right. I think yeah. a lot of people don't get the mini wins. Yeah. So I think if people can just get a couple of small wins under their belt, what drives me a bit mad is people that are like, well, I want to be a millionaire, but I don't want to do the washing up. Yes. Yeah, like, or I don't want to do the yeah. smallest little thing. Yeah. Because they feel like, actually, I'm here on the journey, so I'm not going to start here. Right. You have got to start at the bottom. You've got to be willing to do whatever it takes, and you've got to look to build it up over time, and eventually you get there. It drives me mad when somebody has big goals, but they won't take the first step. Yeah, yeah. First step. Lisa, next That's one. That's like going, I want yeah. to win a marathon, yeah. but I don't want to go out jogging to start exactly, with. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You want yeah. the end result, but you don't don't want to do the work. But, yeah, look, well, look I, thank you very much. Thank you. For coming over all the way from Chicago. And, you know, uh, congratulations on winning your Thought Leadership Award. Um, what yourself and, and Steve are doing is awesome, you know, and I think it's, uh, you know, incredible. I wish you and your clients the best of luck. Keep making that impact and doing the things that you are great at. And, you know, and we'll keep cheering you on and supporting you in any way that we absolutely can. Uh, where can people get in touch with you if they'd like to get in touch with you? What's a good place for them to connect with you? Do you want to yes, uh, give course. them a bit of a steer to where they can go and find you online? Absolutely. It's theremitmethod.com. So the and then remit is spelled R-E-M-M-E-R-T method.com. Fabulous. Go and check that out, everybody. There's no doubt, you know, especially if you're somebody that's feeling a little bit low on confidence, perhaps you've had some stuff happen in the past that you, you haven't been able to connect the dots. You feel like you're getting those blocks and those blocks are holding you back. Go and check it out. I'm sure uh, Adil will, and Steve will really be able to help you. They're lovely people that create amazing results. Uh, thanks for coming over again. And I look forward to seeing everybody on the next episode of Business Growth Secrets. Thanks again, everybody, and see you very soon. Don't forget, if you know someone that can benefit from what we talked about today, share this episode now. Go and share it. It's a somebody else can get some great value and I'll see you on the next episode.